Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and welcome to the Extras channel where I've got some more stuff to take out of the box for all of you. I'm not putting this on the main channel just yet because what I'm unboxing here is the beginning of a project I'm going to start doing uh, down here in my office area and uh, it will somehow in the future uh, coincide with our home theater stuff that I've been doing on the main channel. So if you've been following my uh, adventures on the main channel, I picked up a new OLED television the other day which has really uh, gotten me uh, kind of motivated to get my home theater working the way I want it to work and uh, for those of you who've been watching me for a while you know that I archive most of my blu-ray movies on my NAS in the closet over there and then I play those movies on any television in the house without having to have discs to uh, swap around to different blu-ray players it's worked out really well for me but of course uh, the 4k technology is different and I can't do exactly what I was doing there just yet but uh, some of the items here in the box will uh, let me do that at some point in the near future and that will be something I'll be documenting on my audio podcast feed. I don't want to get into trouble with anybody uh, and I figured it would be better to start building out that feed anyhow. So I'm going to be uh, continuing this discussion a little bit in an upcoming video but some of the specifics we'll cover in audio format as to how uh, you might go about archiving some of your 4K Blu-ray content. So with that said, uh, let's take some stuff out of the box here and I'm going to show you what I am unboxing as I do it. Uh, so this is a nondescript box here, isn't it? So let's get this thing uh, opened up. So let me just put this big box here on the floor. We'll take the little box out here. Uh, let me tilt the camera down. Again, this is the extras channel, so we don't go for uh, fancy editing here. We're going to cut to the other camera. I'm going to grab my uh, trusty Leatherman out of here and open this thing up and see what is inside. This, I believe, is the uh, Blu-ray drive that I'm going to be uh, replacing my other one with. So let's open this up real quick here. And there we go. So this is the drive I went with, and part of why I went with this drive is that um, I've heard good things about its ability to read uh, some of these 4K discs. Now my intention is not to play them back on the computer, just to archive them, so I will be experimenting with this in some software called Make MKV that I've used in the past, so be on the lookout for that. This is an internal drive, but uh, what I did is I grabbed my uh, external enclosure that I was using on my old Blu-ray drive, and I'm going to be putting this one in here in a second. So uh, that's what we got here. Now, what's cool about this is that it also supports the M-Disc format, and I'm, go I'm going to show you what M-Discs are right now. So in the box here, in addition to that drive, I bought two sets of M-Discs. Now, these are uh, Blu-ray discs, blank Blu-ray discs, and uh, what they are built for is long-term archiving. And the reason why you want to do that is because of what I have here uh, as an example. Let me find the best example of this issue that I'm going to describe to you. So here's a, a CD that I have here. It's about, this one's probably about, yeah, this one's good, probably about 20 years old now. And if you look up here, you'll see that part of the disc here is kind of rotting away. There's like a little spot there. I'll try to take a picture of it and give you a closer look at it. And what's happening is, is that these um, writable CDs, in this case, have a die on them. And that actually is the same technology used for writable Blu-rays as well as writable DVDs. And over time, these things oxidize and rot away. And of course, when you have a rotten disc, you can't read the data off of it. Here's another example of that. And what's funny is these old, these old discs from 20 years ago, I went and bought a bunch of cheap discs, and these are the ones that uh, seem to be failing the most here. These are not scratches. This is underneath the surface here, and uh, this is the die actually rotting away underneath. Um, and it was funny because all these cheap discs that I got all are failing now 20 years later, but the expensive ones I bought uh, 20 years ago actually still look pretty good, but I think all of them will uh, have this fate uh, lurched upon them at some point. So if you have a lot of these um, writable CDs archiving important stuff in your uh, archive, my advice would be to start getting the data off of them because this is you know, obviously physical damage that is irreversible. So when you have these spots on there, you want to get them taken care of. Now what makes the M discs different is that they are using, uh, I, I guess it's kind of a patented thing and nobody knows exactly what they're using, but uh, they're saying it's, it's, it's like a stone, like a, like a kind of a mineral-based thing that is getting etched with a higher-powered laser, which is why these won't work on a regular uh, Blu-ray burner. You need to get one that is specifically um, the uh, M-disc form format here. And you, and you know, whoops, I'm losing a piece of my thing there. Um, and you know that it's uh, compatible with that. Uh, because it has M dot disk on there. So that's how you know your drive is compatible. And a lot of them, I believe, are. And let me open this up real quick so we can take a look at what the disk looks like. It's probably not going to be all that noticeably different to us, but apparently whatever material they're using here 
is not prone to oxidation in the same way that these organic dyes are on these other ones. So they, they say it'll last like, like a thousand years or something. There's no way to verify that, but I guess the Department of Defense did some testing with these discs and uh, standard discs. And when they did this high humidity, high oxidation thing, uh, these discs did not fail, whereas the other ones did. So you can see what the uh, surface here of it looks like. Now, my understanding is, is that these discs used to be sold uh, completely transparent, and what they ended up doing was just putting uh, a color layer behind them so people knew which side to put in the drive. I guess some of these didn't have a label on the front of them or something. So uh, whatever it is, we're going to be using these for long-term archival, and again, they're going to be uh, better suited for uh, longer-term storage. But you know, this technology hasn't been around, I think it's been around maybe 10 years or so, uh, not 20 like, like these other discs have been, so who knows how long it'll last. But uh, I'm going to take the Department of Defense's word for it that if these things did do better than standard organic discs, uh, then we're going to go with that. Now, I picked up two different types of discs here. These are uh, the 25 gigabyte discs. These do cost a lot more than your standard Blu-ray discs do, but again, I'm doing this for long-term archiving for a few different things that I want to save, so uh, that's why I went with these. And there's also uh, a 50 gigabyte disc here as well, which is a dual layer. Uh, what I didn't get, because they're a lot more expensive and I didn't need this much storage per project just yet, uh, they also have 100 gigabyte disks available too. But uh, again, you need to have a compatible uh, Blu-ray burner and one that's compatible with that 100 gigabyte format because that uh, 100 gigabyte disk is also available in the standard organic uh, version as well. So that is what I chose on uh, the disk front there. So now I'm going to get this thing uh, installed into my uh, case here, and maybe I'll do a little speed up thing as I do it. Now this is a SATA drive, and this uh, enclosure that I got a number of years ago actually is a SATA enclosure. Hopefully it fits in here. Um, so let me get this uh, slid in there. There we go. And get it connected up. So we're going to plug in the SATA connector here and the power connector next to that. And that's all I need to do to get this thing going. I do have to screw it back together, of course, and go from there. Uh, now this, it's funny, this enclosure came out before uh, the Macs had USB 3 ports on them. So the best I've got here is USB 2, but uh, on my Mac, my iMac over there is my primary computer. I have a Thunderbolt dock that has a, a SATA connector on it. So I'm going to be plugging it into the eSATA uh, on that one, which is why I didn't opt to get a new enclosure. I like to reuse stuff as best I can if I don't have to spend money that I don't need to spend. So hopefully this will work and we'll uh, give it a good test. I'm not going to bore you with watching 80 gigabytes get written to the drive here. It does take a very long time to burn 80 gigabytes of stuff, or in this case, 50 gigabytes. So uh, we won't do that, but uh, I will let you know in a future video how all of this came together. So I'm gonna screw this thing back together and uh, I'm gonna start playing with it and see how all of it goes. And I'll have a video coming up soon where I'll talk about uh, my success or failure archiving some movies on this. And I'm also going to let you know uh, how the disc burning went uh, with these 50 gigabyte disks as well. So you can get a feel for how all of this new uh, disc burning technology is going to work. I still think it's relevant in this era because uh, we do have large files and I don't want those large files taking up all this room on my NAS if I never access them, but I still wanna have them uh, set aside. And my hope is that as these disks come down in price, I can start uh, archiving all of my videos here on the channel when I make them because right now uh, after I upload the video to YouTube I do save the final output video but I trash all the raw footage and I would like to maybe retain those projects if I ever want to do something more with them in the future so lots of things that I want to do and uh, hopefully these discs will help me archive better than what I'm doing now so until next time this is Lon Seidman thanks for tuning in to the extra channel I'll let you know how all these projects turn out this channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.